Hi guys, today we're going to take a look at page 6 of the Unit 2 Classwork Packet. Uh, I apologize if the number actually got cut off at the bottom, uh, it must have just been a formatting issue, but you'll know it because it says vectors in big bold letters at the top. Now vectors, uh, in physics they have a formal definition, right, they're a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. But for our purposes, we're going to consider a vector to be much simpler. We're just going to look at a vector as a way of describing motion with a translation, okay? And the way that we, res that we represent a vector is as follows. Two kind of like sideways Vs and then numbers. So I'm just going to give you a random example here. Like let's say negative three comma four. For your purposes, okay, you guys, all you need to know is how to read this in terms of coordinate rules instead. So if they give you a vector like this and are like, perform this transformation, you know what you're actually doing? You're actually doing this. X minus three, Y plus four. So a vector in a geometry context is really just this, just without the X and without the Y, right? It just tells you which direction you're moving in. So in this case, three units to the left and four units up. So with that being said, let's take a look together at example number 11, shall we? Okay, now again, I know that they give you a graph for this one. However, remember when I said, if you want to make it really efficient, you don't really have to use the graph. You can if you want to, but the more efficient way is to simply apply the coordinate rule directly to the coordinates. But I get a little bit ahead of myself. Let's take a look at question 11, okay? Now, question 11, uh, they give you three coordinates here, all right? So they give me negative 4, comma 2, uh, 5, negative 1, and to, oops, it should be negative two, negative two, I apologize, okay? Now, they also give me a vector, right? And they're asking me to graph and label the figure under this particular transformation. So let's write this vector out, shall we? This vector is given by negative one, negative five. Let me write that down. Okay, so guess what that means? First of all, vectors, we use them to represent translations, okay? Once again, vectors represent translations. All I gotta do is perform that particular translation on each individual pair of coordinates. Let's see how that's gonna work. So the negative one, that tells me that this is really x minus one. In other words, I'm going one unit to the left. So what I'm gonna do here is I am simply, for each one of my x's, I am going to do minus 1. Similarly, this right here tells me that I'm going 5 units down. So for each one of the y's, I'm just going to go down 5 units. Now here, the only real issue then is going to be figuring out, well, like, what are the actual final coordinates? A few of us know that we have some issues with our integers, so let's make sure we know how to think through this. I lost four, and I lost one more, so in total, I lost five, right? Just watch out for that stuff, guys, okay? Sometimes it's pretty easy, but again, this one trips a lot of people up. I lost one, I lost five more, so in total, I lost six. And last but not least over here, I lost two, and then I lost another one, so I lost three, the same thing over here. So if you wish, you're welcome to go ahead and actually graph those coordinates out and label them, uh, what'd they say? S prime, T prime, and R prime, right? And uh, you could do that, I know you could do that. But if you're the kind of person that's looking at this from an efficiency standpoint, the most efficient way to actually get where the coordinates are gonna be is to simply apply the rule on the coordinates themselves, all right? Now, um, the other way that they could ask a question like this is they could ask you to take the image and to go backwards, looking at the images uh, to actually write the coordinate rules in both coordinate rule notation and vector notation. 
So in order to do that, let's take a look at the next page, page seven, and I wanna take a look with you guys at example number 15. Okay, so first things first. For example number 15, I want you guys to look and I want you to tell me which one's the original and which one's the post image. Which one came first, which one came second? Well, you know which one came first because there's no prime. So the one on the left came first and the one that has the primes came second. So far, so good. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to put your pencil or finger or whatever the case might be on a coordinate. Let's say we'll put it on D, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to tell me how many units do I have to go to the right? And then how many units do I have to go up in order to get to D prime? Let's count this together. One, two, three, four, five, six. I want to say I have to go six units to the right, and let's count up, shall we? One, two, three, four, hey, hold on. No, I'm sorry, it's not six, it's seven. I can't even count. Shame on me. Okay, so now that I am sufficiently embarrassed, so we have four units to the right, so, pff, seven units to the right, and four units up. Once again, I apologize. I am enumerate, I can't count. Let's try that again. So I went seven units to the right, and I went four units up, right? So everybody agree with me on that? Seven units to the right and four units up. Okay, so seven units to the right, four units up, I can write that either as x plus seven and y plus four. So that's the coordinate rule, or we could say the coordinate notation. You might hear me refer to it as the algebraic notation. Or if I wanna represent it as a vector, I can just write the numbers in between those two uh, kind of like sideways Vs, seven, four, okay? And if you want one more example of this, just take a look with me at example 16. For example 16, the original image is actually on the right. And the way we know that is because there's no prime, right? There's no little pesky apostrophe there. So I'm gonna put my finger on, let's say uh, M. Okay, so to get from M to M prime, I have to go, I think four units to the left, and then I think two units up, right? Okay, so four to the left, that will be X minus four, and then two units up, that'd be Y plus two. And if I wanna represent that as a vector, I can just do it as negative four comma two inside those beautiful little sideways things, right? So in other words, a translation can be represented two ways. It can be represented either using coordinate rules or vectors, but it doesn't change how the transformation is applied. What you end up with is you end up with a rigid motion transformation. The figure does not change in size. It stays the same size, it just changes location in the end of the plane.